folks, uh, before we go on, I just want to check on some sports stats. You know, keep myself sharp here on the sports, and I'll use my computer and just go in here, and I'm going to check. Okay. Yes, sir. Episode 10. Hmm. Too much dip. My name is Dave. Thank you for joining us here today. We got a lot to get to. I'll just go ahead and get right to it. We got Dylan here. Hello, everybody. Very happy to be here after what was a fantastic, exciting, exhilarating weekend of sports. Just awesome sports all around. Talking to KJ before. KJ's here, by the way. What's up? What's going on, fellas? I agree. Exciting weekend, to say the least. We've got so it's it's so easy for us to do the show when we have like something with every major sport that we're all interested in. Minus college football, and that's most because there weren't that many good games. Um, every every sport pretty much delivered. Did you check out them Bobcats? We'll get to that. <laughs> Mike is here. Michael Weiner, with a somewhat stash going in solidarity with me. Yes. It feels great to be here. Thank you for having me. Exciting. Exciting for an overreaction Monday. Man, uh, yeah, I thought about maybe just having you, just giving you like a monologue to open the show. But I thought, thought better of thought it. better of that. Yeah. Unf I don't know how, <laughs> how gets, that goes over. He gets enough air I get, time. Yeah, I get plenty yeah. of time. I'm, I'm not... I'm not jealous. You pick um, your spots tastefully. No I, one complains. I am disappointed that the Baylor game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite disappointed the Baylor game got canceled because I, I felt like my uh, performance on the live stream of Chip Gaines was really strong this week. And it, that's it just why they work canceled, out. though. It's just too electric. I guess I it went too viral. Contact <laughs> tracing. Like Can I say that I, I fully expected you to just flip that and absolutely roast Baylor for the many things you can roast Baylor for? I did not see you being on Baylor against uh, U of H. But, you know, doesn't matter. Moot point you know, now. I'm all business when it comes to picking football games, Dave. <laughs> There's it no morals the when it picks. comes to gambling. Hey, before we get into it, follow Too Much Dip on Twitter. That's dip with two Ps. Also, Too Much Dip podcast on Instagram. We're growing, man. We're trending upward. Have you seen this? We're trending. It's going in the right direction. It's what you want. Also, uh, what's up, Parks? Parks is in the building. He's out there with my dog, Randy, my literal dog, not human, our employee. <laughs> um, subscribe. Leave a review. And we've got, oh, yeah, Thursday live streams. We're doing those now. If you missed the live stream, we put the audio up on the feed. You may have noticed it. It's basically us. We go 30 to 40 minutes yeah. on. We try to stick with football, but if there's some quick dips, we do those too. NFL, pick games, college football, same thing. It's a lot of fun. It's low pressure. We just get in there, mix it up. Micah does bits, as he referred to. He does a, <laughs> a one hell of a Chip Gaines. Did you even know who Chip's, Chip Gaines was until Micah did it? The was only reason you? I know is because you thought you spotted him in our office last week before okay. he did it. And I was like, who the hell is Chip Gaines? And you explained <laughs> it to me. And then Micah did Chip Gaines on the live stream. Oh, it all came around. So it's only me that's searching Chip Gaines, Joanna Gaines parody videos? <laughs> I'm... Thought we were just being honest. Uh, on the on the hub, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so it sounds like a yes. I, I will say that watching the YouTube videos, there are reasons to see the episodes uh, in addition to listening. I don't know. Do both. People are saying we're the most aesthetically pleasing podcast in the Washed Media Network, and that's saying a lot. Considering that we've Who's got many that? other ones. I mean, I, I think any podcast looking. that Barrett and Phil are on is probably better. That's what I Fair. said, but I saw that those comments. Barrett and Phil on Club Cool, Jr. and Kate, so many screens. Dylan and whoever, Sally, me, <laughs> Will, whoever. It's usually – it's been Will the last couple of weeks, but doing the, uh, the mail-in. It's a good-looking podcast yeah. group. But this one, for some I'm reason – I'm not going to argue. Randy says – Human Randy says that we do numbers on the YouTube. That's true. So you can watch us there on the Wash Media YouTube channel, see what you're missing. We put up the visuals there, too, and visuals are going to be a big player today. So We're not even showing our feet on that YouTube video, either. You know how the feet community, they come after us hard. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Are you cool with doing that just for the sake of the pod? <laughs> just, just to run the numbers up. Uh, we'll, we'll see if week to week, if you're behind in picks, you've got to do the yeah, whole I'll, I'll episode just, foot up on I'll the counter. I'll pop the feet up on the counter, yeah. <laughs> You want to get into it? Uh, yeah. Let's just get. We got to get into what everybody came here for. I tease us on the Instagram. Smoke some bitch. 
Some shit was smoked this weekend. A, a lot. A lot of smoking. Randy, we're gonna need we're gonna need the visual. I'm gonna just gonna let KJ take it here. Well, before we do this, I do want to applaud the crowd. It looked like a record-setting weekend on Meat Smokers Only, which you can find on Instagram. The submissions to the stories this week, the numbers are unmatched. And, in fact, that's what inspired me to set out uh, to do a little smoking of my own, to set the scene. I had a little impromptu uh, trip over to the in-laws. Uh, my father-in-law is going to be heading to Ireland for 45 days. So I was like, you know what, let's hook up some Texas smoked meat. Watch a little Cowboys. We'll get down. The problem is I was doing this on like a five-hour window. You know, things were flying. Bullets were flying. And as you see here, it was by far the worst showing of my sm meat smoking career. <laughs> this is so unlike you because I, I have grown accustomed to KJ sending just – a plus photos of meat. Yeah. What's upsetting about this picture is the sheer amount of meat. That a lot of waste. Just got ruined. That has been a lot ruined. of animals died for it's, no reason. Yeah, it's it's not like you just messed up one chicken. Mm -hmm. And this this photo came to us via the the too much dip group chat and wow. with with no explanation. <laughs> it was just KJ sent this this photo for those listening. There's what three racks of three of racks ribs, of ribs, three and two birds, whole chickens. two whole chickens, yeah. and they're torched. I'd say. Um, we were confused, and ran and Randy KJ just instantly said, "Oh, I'll bring it on the pod." It, so it, I'm excited to hear about what happened here. All right. So the thing is about this, like you've got to own up when you fuck up. Like I could have buried this. I could have said nothing because I didn't post any pictures about the process beforehand. Like I said, I was short on time. I jumped into the day, starting this event about eight o'clock, trying to be done in time for kickoff. Smoking three racks of ribs. In four hours is asking a lot of yourself in and of itself. So I was going to go hot and fast on that recipe, which is not my usual route, but I was executing that well. On the chickens, however, I knew that that was only going to take about a half hour or so. What's not pictured here were the unfinished attempts at cream cheese and bacon stuffed jalapeno poppers or jalapenos, whatever you want to call them, that were going to go in as a third tier. I was going all out in a four hour window. You sound like a good guy to have over on game day. You know, when when we're doing it, we're doing it. So, anyhow, long story short, I get started about eight. Things are going phenomenally. Ribs looked great. In fact, I moved the ribs from one rack higher to leave some space for the chicken. Get into my business. As some of you may know, I do live adjacent to a public, uh, semi-public space of land. Some Used might to call be it, private. Some might call it a golf course. Uh, and one of the biggest pains in my own ass is that I can't cook anything in my backyard without some chotch or some guy coming by on the ninth. What's, chotch bags. What you got going there? Gonna grab a plate. Hey, I'll be back around. You got a hot dog going? <laughs> That's hey, man. Dil Dylan asking that. Hey. for the gliz. <laughs> what you got going over there? It smells good. How much? Man. Every single time. To no end, to the point where, like, I just almost ignore them. How That's close, how close is your setup to, like, a tee box or a green, whatever you have going I on I can, there. I mean, I would say 15 yards from the tee ah, to, yeah. so you're, carts are parking so there. So there's no escaping it. Not at all. You're, you're, Not at you're all. a hub of activity. Right. And, okay. you know, being on the ninth, like, it is, there's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I get it. I accept it. It's better than being in a position where I'm getting hit by balls all the time. Yeah. That's true. We've been there. So, anyhow, I'm in the house prepping the jalapenos i just had thrown on the chicken and i get a notification from my front door cam there's somebody at the front door and a knock on the front door and my wife goes uh i think it's a golfer i'm like the fuck so i go you know slump over the front door and it's a guy who just goes hey and i kind of he's looking over my shoulder through to the backyard and i look over and then i see what we'll see here if uh we'll pull us forward here a little bit over the course, as you'll see on the top left of this photo, oh, Exhibit A, 11.09, I set the chicken on the smoker. 11.15 <laughs> a.m., my day goes from basically... Uh, Six minutes have passed. Exactly. The Falcons pre-onside kick to the Falcons post-onside kick uh, in about six minutes. And then... Between 11.15 and 11.22 is when the golfer shows up at my door, and I just go out there, and I'm like, Fuck. There just go. There goes my day, and uh, I that 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 stance was just a pure disappointment. I knew that the everything was gone, and we saw the results. Yeah, that's a well. I, I really 
fuck this one up, Stan. Exactly. Basically, I threw the chicken on there on the bottom grate. Um, I have a gravity smoker. Basically, you throw charcoal in. There's a flame down bottom on the right. You've got too much runoff or drippings towards that flame, and you're going to get burnt. If you put too much on there without a drip pan or something underneath it, and I was just doing too much too fast, and I got burnt in about 11 minutes, 12 minutes. My day just went to hell. Some might say you had too much dip on your chip. <laughs> I won't say that, but some might. Some might. So, yeah, I took the L. No no questions about it. I feel you look so defeated at 1122. <laughs> and I'm just trying to think about what I was doing at 1122 yesterday, probably watching some early golf action and had no clue that things were going south for you. I mean, it's it, it was uh, the biggest loss of my, my short uh, – smoking and cooking career i'm bringing it to the table i will own up to my failures let's learn that lesson was any of it salvageable none of it was salvageable. oh Rain, no if you'll bring it back to uh the the one of the, the results picture here the chickens look like they were yeah but the chickens had only been on there for five minutes yeah i was gonna say there's a lot of pink there yeah oh, so they so look hard. like if they've been on for 20 30 minutes that you know might i'd eat that chicken especially on the bottom left but they'd only been on for five minutes so if the skin is scorched it's charred and nothing inside was cooked. Did you have any issues putting out, extinguishing the flame inside of your firebox? No, 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 no. Fortunately, um, you know, I won't name names here. The smoker that I do have, I really do like. Until they drop a bag, they're not getting a plug here. Um, to choke out the fire, basically, you just slide in these two shields. It's very simple, and it cuts off all uh, air intake, basically. Uh, so it's just you have to kind of done that. Take two pieces, slide it in. There's no more air intake. Eventually, it'll burn itself out. And there was nothing burning or bellowing, or billowing, I should say. It just was, uh, me got scorched. A little bit of quick grease fire, nothing huge, just enough to fuck up my Hate day. to see it. Nothing Hate was salvaged. Nothing. Oh. One additional note. I know I've carried this longer than I wanted to. I left from here. I'm still heading to the in-laws. I'm still dutied with picking up some barbecue. I call a new place that's in between my place and their house in Midlothian. New place that just opened. Give it a shot. Hey, I need a rack of ribs, pound of sliced beef, pound of chicken. I get there. They didn't tell me the price on the phone. Wild guess for those three items and a couple sides. Ribs, uh, pound of beef, pound of chicken, two sides. $42. $100. Okay. To add insult in to injuries, Texas? Uh, this was uh, DeSoto, still in DeSoto. Okay. $100. They charged me $40 for a rack of ribs. Well, that's outrageous. Oh, it, my God. We call I, that price gouging on game day. They screwed up the order, so they gave me two racks, so that felt a little better. Um, it doesn't feel that much better. But it wasn't great. Their chicken was chicken $20 wings. a rack is, is high. It, it, just, it just was three racks from Costco. It was 13 14 bucks. Yeah. So it was an expensive failure of a day. Man. That's my end, end of rant. I will be back, and I will be better. What do you do with the uh, – the, do you, you just throw that away? You, do, you don't leave it out for the coyotes? Nah. That's in, that's straight into the double bag, the trash bag, throw it outside, and the whatever you want to call it, trash bin. Cry. I, I was sad the rest of the day. I didn't care that the Jags lost later in the day. Mm. I, was, I had already taken the L for the Jags. I'm sorry this happened to you. I'm, I mean it. I've had some issues with the Traeger in the past, but no, nothing quite like this. I don't know what I would do if the Traeger – I know some people, if you don't clean out the pellet mm -hmm. thing, it can cause a fire, and I don't know what I would do to stop said fire. Don't use water. <laughs> Just cut off air intake is your best bet to, for any fire. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. This is a, yeah. just, it's a teaching moment. It is. We um, will rebuild, as Dwayne The Rock Johnson would say. Okay. Okay. Uh, can we get into a new sponsor alert? Ooh, Ooh, new sponsor alert, huh? Yeah, why don't you give us a new sponsor alert? Uh, new new sponsor, new sponsor. Grammarly. How about Grammarly? Grammarly. Okay, we've all uh, we've all made mistakes typing and smoking meat, but typing as well, sending an email, an important one. Well, whether you're communicating with the squad online or working on a project, Grammarly is the digital writing tool you can always rely on to get your message across clearly and effectively. Grammarly works across multiple platforms, including Gmail, Google Docs, and Slack. We use all three of those here. Very big yes. players. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more to writing well than catching spelling mistakes. They can help you write confidently no matter where you are. 
Dylan, I feel like you have some kind of equity in Grammarly. As um, you are the grammar guy around here. I, I am. I take grammar uh, much more seriously than most people do, I believe. Um, and coming from a, a person who has been in a position of like hiring in the past, um, I pretty much discount like any resumes or any just email reaching out to me that has poor grammar. I'm like, how do you not, how do you not take this seriously enough to, uh, you know, clean it up a little bit? Grammar is important. It's serious. It really is. Um, they've got the premium Grammarly premium version, and let me say, since I've been using it, I, I don't. I don't take as much time now when I'm sending an email. Like when I'm emailing these guys, like whatever. But like when I'm sending one to like you know one of the agencies we work with or a client, something. It does some of the thinking for you. It really does, yeah. and it makes it, it gives me a lot more confidence when I mash that send button. Um, they've got so much. They've got a, a feature that makes your sentences clear, concise, and crisp by cutting out unnecessary words and redundant words. That's huge. I think most people could use uh, use that in everyday mm -hmm. life. A lot of people ramble, myself included. Shorter is always better. Yeah, always better. One thing that I liked about it is that if you sign up for Grammarly, there is a free element of it that will handle your spelling and some of the uh, basics of grammar, most of which we know. I think we've got a very well-educated audience, you know, fortunately, for the most part. Bad sports takes, but educated. Um, there's a premium feature that helps you know, things like tone, that helps uh, things like conciseness, as you mentioned. And... Using those features uh, has really helped me not come off as uh, Micah may uh, refer to someone in some ways you may not really appreciate. Maybe too feeble in uh, in emails. Maybe too overly friendly in emails. So I, I have really the like both. The opposite problem. <laughs> You're very blunt. Yeah, I don't. I don't mean to be. Well, too alpha. I don't mean. I'm not an alpha. <laughs> I just sometimes that my tone comes off as a little bit aggressive, and I yeah. don't mean it to at all. So I could use this feature. You know, it's tone it down a little resting bit. Resting typeface, I think it's what they call that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect writing tool for anyone who wants to stand out with every word. And check this out. Right now, you can get 20% off Grammarly Premium when you sign up at Grammarly.com slash bang. Bang. B-A-N-G. Again, Grammarly.com slash bang. 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 Uh, it's good. What a dud that was. <laughs> Check it out. I mean, do it. If you're not if you're not doing this yet, I'm telling you, you're missing out because it makes everything so much easier. Improve your writing on all your favorite sites and apps. Outlook, Gmail, Twitter, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, hello. Everybody hello. does long posts on there. You need Grammarly. Check it out. 20% off. Grammarly.com slash bang. All right, let's get into NFL. Turn it up. We got a lot to talk about. Um, do we want to save Cowboys for the end or just do it now? Because I'm chomping at the bit. I'm wearing the T-shirt. I think we start with the boys. we got to start with the boys. Oh, Mike, I'm going to allow you to speak on this because you were an outspoken critic of Mike McCarthy uh, <laughs> a week ago after one week as uh, the new head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. What say you now? I'm weirdly more of a critic of him after this <laughs> win than I was after the week one loss. Can't yeah. imagine why. Can't argue <laughs> uh, with that logic. Uh, let's start. Well, let's give some credit where credit is due. Uh the onside kick is tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Even if if uh, Atlanta inexplicably just refused to pick up the ball, uh, the fact that the Cowboys actually executed a, a an onside kick in the they, year of our Lord twenty twenty is worth celebrating. It's like the Atlanta Hans team was so confused about the type of onside kick they didn't know what to do with it. Like, yeah, like unless it bounces thing? up to him, I don't know. It what looks I'm like a to do. like a wounded animal on the ground. Like, what do we do with it? You know, just leave it there. It or what? reminded me of when Randy when Randy sees like a lizard. Or something outside, <laughs> and he kind of runs with it. But then he looks at me, and he doesn't know if he should what eat the I lizard. Do? Can I? Can I pick it up? It, that it quick was, hop. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of hops back. <laughs> they just like, watched it. Am I supposed to eat this thing or what? It's so weird. Uh, they were like hypnotized. Uh, I mean, I have just a couple other takeaways. Atlanta stinks. I mean, they're terrible, <laughs> um, and, and they deserve nothing. I think I had the stat that Adam Schechter, uh, Schepter, uh tweeted today. I'm gonna get that. I like Schechter. Schechter. I'll go with Schechter. Um, <laughs> Anyway, that, that since 1933, teams that score 39 points and have zero turnovers are 440 and 1 because yesterday Atlanta is that first team to ever wow. score 39 points and not make a turnover and lose. Uh, I mean, and the Cowboys made what? Three turnovers? In the first quarter. In the first quarter and still, uh, still somehow escaped. I mean, same dude forced all three, right? 
The guy who played high school ball with Zeke, I can't remember his name. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, he was actively punching the ball out, like taking full mm-hmm. swings. And there were four, technically four fumbles, but one in a, you know, the player to being down. I don't have anything else to say. I mean, it, it, it was <laughs> impressive uh, that, that the team didn't quit. They yeah, got this the is your team, man. Be happy. And Dak, Dak delivered when they needed to. Dak, he had 450 yards. He had a great game yesterday. Fantastic. Dak is looking awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's the the bright spot. He's making big the throws. C.D. Lamb looked great. He looked explosive. You got to give Jerry and the crew some credit for for getting a guy who's clearly going to be a player. Strong receiving core, great quarterback play, uh, overall so, solid offense, defense not great, not great, not great yet. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if they're I don't think they're going to be a world class defense, but I like some of the players. I don't the the linebacking core is tough right now. Joe Thomas might be their best linebacker, which doesn't make any sense since they dropped the bag for Jalen. But that dude was everywhere yesterday. Uh, Diggs, even though Diggs like they caught some big passes on him, like that dude is always in position. He mm-hmm. just gets beat by perfectly thrown balls. I think. Yeah, you no, that's and his his tackling is. Pretty spectacular for a rookie rookie cornerback. Uh, from what I saw, I may have missed. Uh, if there's a missed tackle that I miss, whatever. Um, but he plays physically. I like it. I will say this on the onside kick: there is no more terrifying position than being on the front line of an onside kick. Granted, you're called the hands team for a reason. Like you should know what to do when you're out there. This may be the biggest biggest example of no pra- no live practice in a shortened off season and no preseason games, Mm -hmm. of that biting a team in the ass. Um, Because you could tell very quickly that there was a mental lapse by two or three players of, oh, crap, what was my assignment here? It happened, and we can talk about it later, happened in the Nuggets game, too, of where two players discuss something, they know their role, and the bullets start firing, and it's not muscle memory. They don't react the way they needed to. Um, It was was shocking. I will personally say that uh, the Cowboys looked great post- First quarter, but you know what I I think uh, Micah should only refer to Mike McCarthy as House McCarthy from here on out. Um, <laughs> this in my book does not go under the win column. Uh, it is a victory for them to count in their record books, but they have yet to win a full game. In my eyes, I know it won't matter later on, but this is not a moral. This is a moral victory at best. I would say. Uh, any takes on the fake punts? The two fake punts. Hmm. <laughs> Those get overshadowed. Nobody's doing that. John Bones Fossil, Jim's son. How do you fail at two fake punts and make three turnovers and still win the game? The second, so it, it does go to the fact that the Cowboys are talented, that they can come back. Because okay. a, a, a failed fake punt is basically a turnover. That's mm-hmm. five turnovers yeah. to zero. A fake. I, I would love to see the actual numbers behind this, but a fake punt where there's someone throwing a football that is not a quarterback – Success rate's got to be like below ten percent. The only it just does not work. I, I don't have the completion numbers. Actually, I think I only have the completion numbers, not the attempts. The only reason I think that that happens happened their their special teams coach John Fossil came from L.A. from the Rams. He had a kicker out there, um, Hecker, Sam Hecker, or not Sam? Yes, Hecker. Uh, Sam, Hecker Sam Decker's in my head, so I don't know. I th- it might be Johnny Hecker, but I uh, think that's it, maybe. Their punters thrown or completed 22 passes. Like, they were aggressive with it. But as a rule... But he was like a, an All-State quarterback. Right. Okay. In high school. As yeah. a rule, you're better off putting, I don't know, all pro quarterbacks out there to run plays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just just line it up on fourth and one like you like it's a normal play exactly. and, and try to get the first down. Really? Didn't mind the first one because it was there. You just didn't execute. Mm-hmm. Second one was... That was the one where I'm like, dude's flying into the sun. Was it like a, a five? They <laughs> were like fourth and five, wasn't it? it? Was fourth and five, and they ran it up the middle. Not fourth and one or something. Yeah, I, I, come on. It, that's the one where I'm like, okay, if this is a lame duck coach, like this dude's getting axed. Like he's not getting on the plane. <laughs> he's getting kiffin'd. Yeah, he's getting. <laughs> they're leaving him behind. Uh, is there anything to be said as Cowboys fans for you guys? Just went through nine to ten years of the same, like. Process, process, process. Boring. Never taking risks up until the last year or two of his of his tenure as a head coach. Speaking obviously of Jason Garrett, and then obviously now you've got the complete opposite. You find yourself complaining about what the complete opposite looks like. If I still, if we're making, if we're coming in here on Monday and having these conversations like six weeks from now, I will not be happy. But two weeks in, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm. He's feeling it out. Um, 
again, I'm giving him a lot of credit because he didn't have any preseason, and it's you know completely new personnel for him. So I'm not – yes, it does feel better than having Garrett back there because – I wish McCarthy wouldn't wear the mask so I could just see his face. <laughs> I want to see his face on this stuff because the mask is – he actually wears a mask the proper way, Yeah. unlike Belichick. And, uh, you know, Garrett – part of the reason people hated Garrett is because they would just put the camera on him after everything. And, you know, he's the clapper. He's got the tool belt. He's just – he just is a robot. Uh, McCarthy, like, I don't really know. I, I, is he chewing some guy's ass on his way off the field? Not literally, but you know what I mean. And maybe <laughs> he is big as a house. He is big as <laughs> Big fat coach. God, God, you gotta let that go. I, it's hard to look at, man. I, I worry about his safety. Look, man, he got it done. You are what your record says you well, are. Well, we'll give you that, Dave. Big Par- <laughs> Bill Parcells, also big Parcells, he said that. <laughs> it's a big man. Also too. big as a house. Yeah. Around the other games in the league, we will touch on just some of the basic ones later in quick dips. But I think the other big game last night, if you saw any of it, the Seahawks Patriots. Yeah. Either of y'all watch? I did watch it. Did you go into this season thinking that Cam Newton was going to be as quality as he's been in New England? I was dogging him last week, actually, yeah, saying that's like true. He, he he threw for under 100 yards. Mm-hmm. I think week one, I was like, I want to see him actually throw the ball before I start to, you know, believe the hype. He looks really good. Yeah, he does. Um, he made some good throws, and um, he's just a monster back there, and is obviously can run the football. But he looks really, really good. Makes me wonder why teams weren't just like chopping at the bit to sign this guy. I don't know if they didn't believe the shoulder was okay or what. But he's only thirty one. Yeah, he's a young dude. If he stays healthy throughout this year, you got to think with what you know him betting on himself this year, performing like he did. I don't know if the Patriots do it, and I don't know if he wants to go back to the Patriots and do it. But the bag's dropping somewhere. Yeah, like there aren't paid. enough starting quarterbacks in the NFL to have thirty two quality starters. Um, yeah, we'll get to it later, later, but Jeff Driscoll is starting a football game next week. Uh, so somebody is going to be paying Cam Newton. <laughs> he looks surprisingly not terrible, though. Yeah. Driscoll. Oh, Driscoll. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, one other thing yeah. on Cam is he does – he makes plays that nobody else makes. Like, mm-hmm. he's got a huge arm. Uh, he makes those long throws across, and and he is just a, a load running the football. He had another – he had 15 carries in week one, 11 rushing attempts in week two. Of course, he got stopped at the goal line at the end of this game. Yeah. I love the play call, though. Yeah, you put the put the ball in that dude's yeah. hands. Yeah, let, let him win it for you. Yeah. I'd, I'd like him running. I don't like the actual play that was the run. I would imagine, uh, as, as somebody sent out on Twitter, so I can't take full credit, uh, I think they called it the Tyrone Swoops play. So maybe that's why <laughs> oh. it appealed to you. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I'm not a Tyrone Swoops guy is at he, all. Is he on a roster? Still a tight end tight with end? the Seahawks, I think maybe? so. If we're going to talk, if we're gonna talk ex-quarterback turn tight ends, we got to give a shout-out to the Belldozer. The Belldozer. He had a catch or two for oh. the boys yesterday. Yeah. Oh, is oh, he on man. the boys roster now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh boy. Dude, you the Belldozer was a problem. i got to pay attention. Yeah, um, Cam did have two rushing touchdowns, and then the the passing touchdown he had also came from the one yard line, which was a beautiful play. I don't know if you saw that. Like in the third quarter, he took like three steps, like he was going to run, and then somebody just sort of like leaked out, and it was an easy little was touchdown it, pass. A te- That's a Tebow jump pass. What was it? He didn't have to jump, but it, it was sort of that sort of thing. And and I was kind of thinking they might run that at the end of the game. Uh, watching the Sunday night broadcast is fun, though. Yeah. Oh, Sunday night. <laughs> uh, in addition to you know Carrie Underwood and her stems, the, it's fun to watch. And and at the end when they just kept showing all the classic finishes between Seattle and New England, it was uh, it was fun. That that was it was some good television. It's Russell Wilson is a hell of a quarterback, dude. That guy. My God. I mean, he he is such a that's a uh, fuego take. He's I mean, such a bozo. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Really. I, pew, pew. I've got a fuego take. Russell Wilson's just a nerd. I, I don't like him. I, he just seems like a big bozo. But dude, he is so good. You know, just the, cool the little thing touch. To say now, best deep ball in the game. Yeah, the, I feel like that gets said every week. He I was put to say, somebody gave that Aaron Rodgers he last week. And yeah, <laughs> he is good, man. He Five really touchdowns is. yesterday, and that, uh, uh, was let it? that man cook. Um, Moore, David Moore, reception. Again, DJ, um, yeah, DJ Moore. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's why it's coming to head. But there was a catch right on the front pylon that was one of the best catches of the season thus far. Two weeks in. Oh yeah. Um. 
It's always nice when the game that on paper should be the best game of the week turns out to be a, a classic. I, and it's one that I tuned in for. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pour a pour a glass of this Long Branch bourbon, courtesy of Matthew McConaughey. I'm gonna watch some football, some Sunday night football. I'm still feeling it from the Cowboy game. So I did. Wow. Last question on that: Is it any easier watching the Patriots sans Brady? Like. Aside from the fact that Belichick looked like he was a kid playing like with those two cone Dixie cups, but he just had one cup in his mouth. It's weird. To, like, to me, it's weird. Yeah. I don't it's mind it see, as much. It's, it's weird to see Bel Belichick on the sideline with a different quarterback. For sure. You know what I mean? I find them easier to watch because I am rooting for Cam. I like, I like it when a player's abandoned by the league. Everybody gives yeah. up on him, and he has like a chance at redemption. It does kind of make it more likable to me. Not and, that I like the Patriots. I absolutely do not. But correct. They're less hateable, I guess. I, I will start pulling audio from Cam's post-game conferences because it's it's always cringeworthy how – it's not dismissive. At this point, it's just his personality. But he is – I guess you would look at Belichick or Pop and say they do the sim, a similar thing, but he doesn't give much time to dumb questions. And it's it's worth it's worth listening. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, Kyler Murray is setting the league – very generic state, setting the league on fire. But he's continuing to dominate, I will say. Uh, they're 2-0. and Minnesota is now 0-2. I did want to pose a very generic question of who you think the best 0-2 team is. You've got the Giants, Eagles, Vikings, Lions, Falcons, Carolina, in my book, the Cowboys, Jets, Dolphins, Denver, Cincy, and Houston. Houston All of these was teams a playoff stink. team. I think it's Houston. It Philly was Philly. a – Divisional winner last year. The only Houston, reason Houston and Philly. Houston is their schedule. They're playing like the two best teams in the AFC back to back weeks. Yeah, I guess they play Chiefs and Ravens. Yeah, and to be fair, they've looked really bad in both. Yeah, they got whipped in both. <laughs> and those they games. got rid of their best player. Yes, I, I would be very worried if I was a Texans passing fan. I, I think Philadelphia is the team most likely to make the playoffs here, uh, as they play in the worst division, probably. But I don't know who the best team is. The Jets stink. The Jets are probably the worst Terrible. team in football. Cincinnati's not going to win more than four games. Uh, I'd say Denver has a chance, but who knows how now, now that Drew Locke's hurt. Yeah. Miami stinks. Minnesota has been, to me, the most disappointing 0-2 team. I would agree. I mean, uh, Kirk Cousins was fucking awful yesterday. <laughs> really, really bad. He had like 111 yards passing and three picks and just trash. They only score 11 points. Um Stephon Diggs is 2-0. And, and we know Atlanta's garbage. The Bills are good. Man. They mm -hmm. look good. Bills yeah. are a problem. Um, the is other Cole Beasley still in the Bills? Yes. Yeah. And Damn. cashing checks. Damn. The man's up to put together a 10-year career when he quit in his first year. He quit in training camp. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they went back and said, back Cole, in. please come back. And SMU's own. He's made $60 million, $70 million since that. Looks like a bull rider more than a football <laughs> player. Ever since – or not ever since. The other thing to come out of yesterday – was uh, for those in the fantasy football world, I think all of us at this table are in some so form or fashion. Injuries. injuries were ridiculous. We had three ACL tears. Saquon, out. Uh, Joey Bosa, Niners, out. I have to say Niners just because I get him and Nick mixed up. And then Cortland Sutton, out. Wide receiver, also SMU, uh, with the uh, Broncos. We got McCaffrey with the high ankle sprain. That's tough. Missing a few weeks. It's tough for Matt Rule's first season there in Carolina to lose McCaffrey. What four to six weeks? Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I say haven't seen the official. The I just said numerous weeks. Yeah. Or red. Uh, Mostert, who's had like one of the best starts to his season. That guy scored touchdowns in I think like eight straight games, something ridiculous like that. Uh, and he had an incredible first half before getting hurt. But his is uh, not as severe as an ACL tear. He'll he'll be back. Looks it looks like. But really tough week for injuries, man. And then Micah's boy drew Locke out two to six weeks with a uh, severe AC joint injury. Who, uh, who came Driscoll's in to replace him? Driscoll? Yeah. Mm. Too much Driscoll. Too much Driscoll. <laughs> hey, can I play some audio? Yes. That I think I, I meant to play this off the top, but I, I completely forgot. Micah, take note. I just wanted to work some playmaker in the original 88, not named Drew Pearson. I feel like I'm just covered in saliva, even though I just heard that audio clip. I can just feel Michael Irvin spitting from, from wherever he was on Spit me. Spit on it, bae. 
Who would be a better coach for Jackson State, Prime or, or Playmaker? Because I don't even think we talked into the fa- talked about the fact that the guy who works for Barstool now is coaching Jackson State. I threw it on quick dip, so we can hit it now. It is uh, – <laughs> I don't know that I could survive a day as a, as a player on a Michael Irvin coach team. Because he's just in your grill? It would just be too jovial and then too just over the top. And then he'd, like, stab you in the neck with some scissors, maybe, allegedly. <laughs> Why does Dion want to do this? Why does he want to coach this football team? He, he's got he's got a job in media. He doesn't need the money. He's been very successful as a— He doesn't uh, want to get in the weeds and, and recruit and, and do all that shit, does he? He's been very successful as a, uh, um, you know— academic administrator in the past you guys <laughs> followed prime prime academy or prime prep prime that prep, worked out yeah. great there, there was no there were no embarrassing headlines or uh terrible breakdowns or him threatening to murder uh the the principal of the school that he named himself after yeah none of that so th- he's, <laughs> he seems like a great candidate i don't understand it's not going to be good at this point you've got to realize that he is one of those types that genuinely wants to do everything like yeah all, all the way back into his athletic career i mean it's, it's easy to do the parallel between he wanted to play football wanted to play baseball at the same time you know screwed over the braves by going and suiting up for the falcons uh in the middle of the Braves series like uh, a playoff a playoff series, series. Yeah. uh he can't help himself when he was doing prime prep which for those not completely in the know of niche dallas private schools uh, academies Deion, yeah uh, dallas um Deion yeah. sanders was basically the founder was probably his title of a private school or charter school that was trying to mimic img academy yes uh emmanuel moutier who's uh in the nba still hanging around a little bit was one of the best athletes to come out of there but basically the place just got torched for basically kids just going there not having any class Uh, And then not paying their teachers. It was just a train wreck. At that same time, he was doing like a a reality TV show. Um, He's obviously been doing the NFL Network. And then I didn't realize, but until you guys brought up, he left the NFL Network to go do a Barstool show, apparently. Yes. Has that started? I think that's still on. He's on with them for the – he does like the gambling pick stuff. I think so. Or he's on their feet. Obviously on their football. I haven't show. watched it, but I've seen. I've caught like little highlight clips on the on social media, on the internet's. Do we all like? Are we all in on Prime just in general as a personality, or is anyone anti? Yeah, uh, I'm anti. I'm, I'm pro Prime. Prime. I, I always thought I didn't like how he always took shots at Romo. He okay. had a he had a personal beef with Romo, and and I I didn't really, I thought it was weird. Um, I feel like Romo. I don't know. I always backed Romo. And and Dion with with the prime prep stuff, just being a DFW guy myself, it was like I never trusted him. There's always something off about him. I get that. I I think I fall into that camp too. The the prime prep stuff. I mean, if you, if you're interested in falling down the rabbit hole, it doesn't take long to Google it. And the first thing that pops up is the spectacular collapse of Dion Sanders Prime Prep Academy, <laughs> uh, in which he he threatened people. They they the kids that actually went there weren't the the Texas Education Agency went like certify it as an actual school it was just a mess and he you know i'm not with prime how has that not been a mind of micah it's i mean the story now is five six years old it's a little little dated but maybe i will well to we didn't say it off top but for those who don't know i guess we've got to at least give the reason you you mentioned that that he's a head coach Deion sanders is the head coach of jackson state university now which is in the SWAC in jackson mississippi uh did you see his entrance today I did not, but they're not playing this year. They'll be playing next year. Does he make it to game week one? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> Ooh. I say – I'm going to say yes. Does he make it to week one? Does he <laughs> – is he on the sidelines of a game? Because they're not playing this fall. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know if they're playing in spring or next fall, but <laughs> – It's a coin flip. I don't know. Sure. I, I'll sure. just say – Either if it, maybe he coaches in the spring. There's no way Deion Sanders is coaching that team next fall. Maybe I, he lasts one year, or maybe he just doesn't show up. I agree. If but we put his the appearance like today, May, it would be. It, I would definitely take the under on May. <laughs> his entrance was remarkable today. He had the band. He showed up. He drove into an auditorium in an Escalade, and then had like nine <laughs> security guards with him. It was really something. 
It's really that. something. Yeah. Whose budget is that going under? On Jackson State isn't probably. Well, apparently like they cow? wanted to hire him last week, but there were issues because Jackson State's a Nike school and Prime is has under a uh, personal Under Armour contract, <laughs> and so that was like the big holdup. Or this would have gotten done last week. And I don't know what the resolution is on that. Ugh. Yeah, I, I, I just I don't think this works out well. <laughs> no. Is, no. Well, we will continue to monitor this the situation <laughs> and update you. Like kids are going to recruit their thing, and oh, I, I get to play for Prime, and then he's just not going to be there. <laughs> he doesn't seem like he st- he does well with adversity. Like if they start out zero and five, like I don't I don't see a Prime school or a Prime coach team like galvanizing and turning it around. Like I just don't know if he's ever had to really deal with that kind of uh, oh, issue. Oh, trash. That's fine, Deion Sanders. There. <laughs> he's been tangentially associated with the Trinity School mm-hmm. in Cedar Hill of late, but. That's the first time I've ever seen him associated with something in his name, just not plastered all over the place. So, you want to do some college? Miami over and Louisville. <laughs> Derek, yeah, not, not, Derek King. The slate was bad. It was bad. Derek okay. King. Not bad. Not bad at all. That was not. A, that wasn't a terrible game. Yeah. Um, I think Baylor Houston would have been fun. We alluded to this earlier. They got canceled because of. Still not completely sure. Contact tracing. I don't really know what that means. There were, yeah, it's not it's great. How salty of opaque. a public statement was that by Baylor, though? Well, I didn't even see it. So, the, I mean, we're aware that it's contact tracing um, because of the way they wrote their public statement. Essentially, they, were, they said that the players that were not eligible to play had not tested positive, however, had been ruled out via contact tracing and have tested negative. And so they, they wanted people to know, like, the rules are what are, are is what is keeping us from playing. Oh yeah, not yeah, because yeah. we've got a bunch of positive cases. Like we're you know we're not out there mugging down the betas. No, are there betas? There's in other the people doing know. that. I just had to go with the, I think the betas are a fraternity, but I mean they could be doing that too. Sorry, I'm just staring at Dylan. Shoot. Why? I think we all know why. <laughs> bang! Bang! It's oh, good. Okay. I mean, I thought you know you you skated by on circling back today, and then Micah does you like that. I didn't say anything. I was just. Just looking. We had an awkward... Uh, he knew. The he knew why I was looking. Yeah. Well, you know what beta rhymes with? <laughs> uh, theta? Gatus. Date oh, hope. What? He thought I was going to say something else. Yeah, I did. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, dude, look. And here's the thing about... Here's the thing about Baylor. They've never... They normally put, like, the, the, the well-being of their students before the football program. So this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They've cared about the public health of Waco for quite some time. Oh, absolutely. Oh, man. The city of Waco, for that matter, has cared about the public health of Waco for quite some time. Chip and Joanna, (laughs) shout out to you. We'll have to wait another week. I don't even know who they have this week. We'll talk about it on the live stream. Yeah. SEC's back this week. Yeah, Texas, Texas Tech. Tech's bad. Tech's not good. (laughs) Tech is bad. Uh, I, I will reserve my thoughts and comments for uh, maybe the big boy stack picks of the week this Thursday night on Wash Media's YouTube channel. Is it not a little bit ridiculous how, like, high horsing and, like, up on a pedestal people have talked about the SEC for having this plan of, like, we'll wait and see, we'll wait and see, and then we'll play. Like, they're the last on the field, and everyone's, like, praising them and bashing the Big Ten's approach to playing. When it's like you haven't played a game and rolled anything out and seen how it's gone yet, but you're bashing the Big Ten for saying, hey, we're going to do what's best, what we think's best. You know what? Actually, now we're going to play. And people are like, they've just screwed this whole thing up. But somehow the SEC is like getting to skate. They haven't played a game either. And it isn't exactly going well for the Big 12 or for Mike Norvell and the ACC. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of apologists out there. They'll yeah, I mean, the Big Ten did come out and say, we will not play, and then they backpedaled. So I think that's where people got off on right. spiking the football on them. But and didn't they, when they announced that they were coming back, they were, it was because of like this, they, they made they it sound like the test. that the science had changed. But like in, that in science days. was available. Like, and I think that's the part of what the Big 12 No, used. they saw these teams playing and like, why are we sitting at home and watching these teams play on TV? They, they, they had some remorse about sitting out. And being, uh, you know, losing out on millions and millions and the of revenue. dollars. And, and the being revenue. in swing states. Ooh. <laughs> um, we can go down that thread. What if I'm leaving that? <laughs> yeah, college football's uh, 
I, I'm excited for the SEC to be back. Ten conference games, no non-conference games. Mizzou likely to go one and nine or eight and two. This whole season just feels like an exhibition. It's very me, strange. Right? And Mizzou has 12 players not playing this week, which wouldn't be a big deal if it was Vanderbilt or something, but it's Alabama. And a uh, new coach, new quarterback, probably not good the for us. The games just feel less meaningful Apologies to me. to the Commodores. We can save it for Thursday, but do you know what that line looks like? I think I saw 26 or Ooh. something. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. What do you think? Uh, quick take here. Aggies, do they finish in the top half of the conference? Uh, yes. No. Micah. I think they surprise. I got to look at the the schedule here. Oh come on! They yes or SEC no? Team. Nobody else is uh, doing. Oh, oh, to be fair, they start here. the season ranked tenth in the country. I'm so just, you should. I'm just saying. Uh, the answer is yes. They should be in the top half of the league. I don't think so. I think they go five and five. Call uh, my shot. I'll say the only good thing. Actually, I'll walk that back. The best thing about that school is that they do the big, uh, the big thing or big day. They go do like Bonfire. public service. Oh man, it's a big uh, thing. They're doing that off they're campus. Not doing so. that anymore? Are they? I th- Other I think than that, they are you know, sort of. They got jars. Uh, That's that all weird. I've got. College football. Probably shouldn't have said that. Yeah, They're you doing the should know. Yeah, way to go. Sorry, intern Peyton for Micah. Intern Peyton and only intern Peyton. Sure, she'll have electric responses to it. Um, what are you going to do her like that? <laughs> <laughs> I take Whoop. it back. I take it back. Uh, hey, Micah. Notice, sure. You, notice you had some smell good on when you walked into this office today. You smell, smell pretty good, I'll tell you that right now. Well, thank you. That's very nice. Was it by any chance... Hawthorne. Hawthorne, you bet your ass it was David Ruff. Okay. God, uh, I love Hawthorne. first and last name again. I know I, 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 I'm not joking. I you love uh, Hawthorne, man. I do. I love it. I use the body wash, and today I did hit a little uh, antiperspirant on the way out the door. Or actually, uh, deodorant. I'm sorry, on the way out the door. It's a tremendous product. I it like really it. is. Yeah, yeah. Th- they tailor your scent to you and your your vibe, your what you what you like, what you drink. It's the little quiz they give you. It takes two minutes. Love the quiz. It takes two minutes, and then they uh, type in that little formula, and boom, the perfect two cents, actually. I'm not going to name names. A work and a play. Work and a play. You're both. I call you work and play. Yeah. If you're still wearing, like, Cool Water or Curve or something. like Micah. I'm, 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 I'm easy. I'm not naming names. He might be our video guy, and he might not have a microphone to defend himself. But he might smell if, like shit. If you're, <laughs> if you're still wearing that. You got to take this quiz, like Dylan said. It takes like two minutes, if that, and it'll tell you. It'll tailor something to your taste. It's yes. fantastic. And it's not just smells. They, you know, you can do it with deodorant as well, all sorts of stuff. Shampoo, body wash. If you have like an oily face, they'll get you the right face cleanser, lotion, all that. It takes two minutes. And, uh, yeah, I, I wear the work and the play. I kind of rotate. Depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes you're feeling flirty. Sometimes I wear the play to work. Yeah, because you, you wear the play work, too much. I wear the work to play. It's kind of annoying, honestly. Yeah. You really throw no us one off. expects me to do that, but I do it. No. I was trying to figure out what the sense I had for my work and play, and I will say they nailed it. Because at work, I am both fresh and aquatic, because you know I keep <laughs> that thing wet. And oh uh, when God. I'm playing around, it's a family, yep, this aromatic is a family and woody. Here. Okay. <laughs> Emphasis on the aromatic. <laughs> Check out Hawthorne.com. That's H A W T H O R N E dot com. It's Hawthorne with an E. And use promo code. Bang! Bang! Just one. It's bang. good. Just one. Promo code bang to get 10% off your first per- first purchase. That's Hawthorne.com. Use code bang. 10% off your first purchase. Check it out. Good sponsor. Dot .co, not dot .com, just to clarify. Oh, my bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hawthorne.co, my bad. Promo code bang, Hawthorne.co. I apologize. Hey, I'm here for you. That's, that's, that's why you got me on board, Dad. One thing that I will not apologize for, absolutely never, is creating the monster that is Bryson DeChambeau. We call You're that You're taking a credit for his um, change in philosophy and strategy and, and all the gains that he's... I am. Okay. I am. You're taking credit for all of his gains? I am taking, well, most well, of his gains. I, I he brought it to the, the public forefront back in, was it 2017, Dave? It was his first Players' Championship, his rookie 2017. year. 2017. We're the ones who first reported on it. You are you specifically asked him the question. I told him. He said, he said he's low-key thick. He was. What's your routine? And he answered us. 
He said he was doing a lot of isometric stuff. Yes. And it was like, and you could tell in that what is, moment. What is isometric? Bench. Exercise? Correct. Mm -hmm. I, I thought said it was that like when you focus on like one, like doing like a single arm tricep extension, like for example. Standing, uh, I thought it was jumping on boxes and stuff. <laughs> Plyometrics. So, apparently, we don't know. Well, that's plyometric. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's, so like bench <laughs> it's a bench press is a compound lift. I don't know if that's the mm. same. I'm very confused. I'll save it for you, thick boys out there. All I'm gonna say is, uh, he, I sparked it. Sorry, isometric exercise, also known as static strength training. Examples include the plank and side bridge, as well ah. as the wall set and many yoga poses. Oh, so sounds like weightless. Shit. Yeah, you've exercising. been exercising. Like you don't use any. Gotcha. Well, he's, it's just your. Body, I, don't, I can't body believe that that dude is is not is just doing body weight. Well, this was 2007. This That's was, right. Somebody had the comment on the. Uh, this was 60 pounds ago. On the broadcast that like he came out of college looking like a linebacker, which is one of my favorite things. Anytime they compare, like they had to do it with Brooks Kepka, like built like a linebacker. He's not really built like a linebacker. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean he's not. Now. Now he, I don't. Br Bryson looks more linebacker esque. Definitely, but Bryson coming out of college looked like like a uh, a three A like West Texas linebacker <laughs> who might get a ride at yeah. like Navarro or something. Yeah, he looked like a tight end who needed to put on. He's gonna compete 40, for playing time. You know he had a double XL he neck could roll. See the field. <laughs> Coach is like, "What are you eating today? Like you gotta you gotta put it on." Yeah, he's red shirting for sure. You it's, that third it's gonna PB take him a couple years to get on the field. He might end up in one of those videos where, like, the, where yeah. like they, they surprise him with a scholarship. And he's like, he's just a, <laughs> oh, he's just a fun, geez. he's just like a, a feisty walk on. He just tries real hard, real rep. But anyway, we're talking. He won the U.S. Open yesterday. Um, none of us picked him, but that's okay. Nope. I don't know how much of this y'all watched. I watched all day Saturday, and outside of watching it on my phone while the Cowboys were on, I watched this. Uh, you know, sparingly yesterday, but by the time I, I, I had to go pick Randy up from the groomer, it was over. There was like three holes left, and he wasn't going to blow it because the dude is just pissing on drives. I found myself pulling for Matt Wolf. Uh, I like him for some reason. I think it's his wacky, uh, unorthodox swing that's got me, um, and he's just long as hell. Why is Oklahoma State such a golf powerhouse? Don't know. I mean, I say that as someone who just knows that there's, what, three – Hovland, Victor Wolf, Hovland, Ricky Fowler, and Ricky Fowler right there, are yeah. the three that I know of. And if I know of three, like I imagine there are others. Probably a couple more. Right, and I know that UT has at least four or so. Georgia, I know, has a few. Cole golfers. Hammer coming soon. Um, so it blows my mind, but yeah, seeing Wolf. I mean, he came in second at what at, at par or at even whatever. Yeah, you he call shot it? even par. Even par. Yeah, he was uh, he was outmatched and outgunned and outmanned. <laughs> it was not great. Uh, I found myself pulling for Louie. I was texting with Dan, Jack Hammer, and I was just like, for some reason I want Louie to, to pull this out. I don't know why. Just because I, I think, you know, it would be such a like out-of-nowhere thing. Uh, it didn't happen. Bryson's really good. Uh, he Tony up. Yes. All facets of his game with his straight-ass tricep pop and putter stroke. Uh, it, it was it was pretty crazy to see. And then he thanked literally every sponsor he's ever, ever had <laughs> in his uh, – in his interview afterward, which, wow, what a guy. Including Orgain. Including Orgain, which they do make a good protein shake. Drop the bag. <laughs> you can get him at Costco. Yeah. Hmm. Pony up. Good shit, BDC. Yeah. Uh, anything else on this? Oh, Matt Wolf, uh, cockiest course entrance of all time outside of the cat. Oh, yes. But the cat's is deserved. He's the cat. How did you find that clip? Where was it? They showed it on the broadcast. I was watching. Oh, I think I was okay. watching like the Golf Channel pregame. Ah, gotcha. Did you tweet that out? I did uh, at D Carter Ruff did on you Twitter. Go micro? That was you. Yeah, yeah, it was me, KJ. Huh. Oh, you saw it on you saw it on one of the barstool ones first. I, what? I, you know what? <laughs> you now that you say it, I did see your name on. Oh, the video. you did. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I love going micro. Thank you to my my good friends at the No Lang Up Podcast for the RT. Um, yeah, he walks in. What did he? Was he really even talking to anybody? Because it looked like he was doing a bit. Well, what did he say? He goes, tell your wifey. I said, hi. Yeah, who was he talking <laughs> to? What are you doing, dude? Wifey. I'm not telling my wife you said hi. Matt Wolf with your cocky backward T-Man hat. Need more of that. That's how T-Man walked into the Grand X office. Yeah, that every day. <laughs> Major T-Man vibes. T-Man is cooler than Matt Wolf. T-Man is lightning years cooler. Sorry about those, I, uh, I, that mean green, T-Man. Oh. Yeah. Shots. We didn't even talk about the Yeah, podcast. no, it's okay. Pony up. It's okay. Anybody, anything else? Oh, Zach Johnson, sneaky top ten. I didn't see that. Well, he, well, he did. 
You did, KJ. Good for there Zeke. were a ton of people tied at eighth, which, including our picks, I will out us in saying, uh, who picked Xander? I did. Dylan picked Xander, finished fifth, four over. The rest of us, uh, you two picked I was on Rory. Rory. Yeah. Also six over, as was. Well, he came out and just he flamed out on the first hole yesterday. Yeah, not so. great. Not great. None of us hit there, but we'll, there was we'll all, count that as a triple play if we're picking winners uh, from here on out when we do our picks. There was a lot of talk early in the week or after Thursday that the course was too easy and that the, these guys are just, you know, beating it up. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Sorry. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. Like Rampage? Get, get through this. <laughs> It turned out that Bryson was the only player who ended up under par. So, yeah, revenge. Uh, the only other thing that I want to talk about on this, and you guys watched a little bit of it, dude doesn't hit fairways. He just hits the ball so far. the 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 strategy is always the U.S. Open. You got to keep in the fairway because the roughs are impossible. Bryson just said, "Fuck that." He only hit like two. Uh, Wolf only hit two on Saturday and shot a sixty-five. And then Bryson only hit like six yesterday and won the damn tournament. It's wild to me that, uh, on, like on Thursday, like you said, guys were going pretty low and people were criticizing the course, saying it was too easy. They were just like, bet. And they just <laughs> overnight, like, all right, we'll see what you can do. Tomorrow. So I heard this today. So Thursday and Saturday were what most people call the easy days. And that's when Matt Wolf feasted. Uh, Bryson on Friday and Sunday, that's when he made his move. So. Yeah, because you know what? He bombs it 360, and when you're in the rough and you can hit a wedge, it's a lot different than having a 7-iron out of the rough or, or uh, worse. Other That's than other than pin, <laughs> <laughs> Dave, other than pin locations, what do yes. they change about the course to make it more difficult? Um, Just not cutting it or cutting it? I don't know how— watering it versus watering it? They definitely— Yeah, no, like sometimes you'll you'll see that the, the setups criticize on other tournaments like— Oh, they watered the course down to slow it down. They did that famously at the the Nelson when it, one year at Trinity Valley or Trinity Four. Excuse there me. No trees out there. There's no trees out there. No, I guess that doesn't really work in Texas. Um, I know Thursday there was no wind. There was no and wind. And that's always you know the pros will eat up any course if there's no of course wind. nothing you can do about that. Yeah, but it's just pin locations. I mean, there's those. You could put it like into you know some stuff that we would go out there and you saw Danny Lee. Did you see the guy six? Was it a six jack? <laughs> oh, uh, I, f I felt bad for him. I mean, he did it to himself. And he lost his cool a little bit there, but God, we, we, we hurt can, his we, wrists. So. Mm. We can relate. <laughs> yeah, what a convenient, what a p move to. I don't just, think I've ever had a six jack. No, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm just saying like you've reached a point of frustration. Like I'm just gonna fucking go out there and just whack yeah. at it. I don't even even, even in like anymore. even in like high school when I would stay home sick, home alone. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, New world record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. Wakefoot looks tight. I, you know, I'd, yeah. I'd like to. Where's it next year? I believe it's at Pebble Beach. Oh, okay. is that right? Wait, I thought it was Tory. No, Tory, not Torrey. Pebble. In one of the California. You know, Dylan's ones. played there. I have. I have not played Pebble. Didn't you shoot? Didn't you have a really good day? It Torrey? is. It is Tory. Mm. I played pretty well at the Holt. Pretty well. Okay. Okay. You know, there's a Stanley Cup final going on. Man, it feels good to be able to watch a game. As you guys know, game one, I was at uh, five year anniversary dinner. That's fine. You know, <laughs> some things are more important than sports. Um, tonight, though, I'll be dialed. I'm gonna be. I'm not only. I'm gonna be dialed. I'm going to probably pour uh, one weak cocktail, thinking of Micah. And uh, I'm going to enjoy some puck, man. I, I said stars in five, which I know is crazy. No, Literally no one is picking the stars. I just, I just think. You're man, feeling it. We're feeling it. When have we ever heard no one was picking the stars? I really enjoyed the, the text exchange you had with J-Bone, where he said uh, lightning in five, but Dallas wins game one. Um, interesting. Hmm. I think they were all conceding game one because of, you know. Because uh, no rest or whatever? No rest. They put an overtime game. Dallas to, got fresh legs. Dallas got fresh legs. Um, and they, were, they, they didn't want to uh, they didn't want to be upset. Now, the to, be that, to be clear, I think the Stars needed to win game one. Like, that, not a must win, but like. That was the game to steal? That would have been a problem. Yeah. 4-1. Uh, 4-1. Convincing. Convincing. Your goaltender is, uh, dare I say, standing on his head. Mm. You know, man. I mashed the button. My only takeaway from this is that, and I will say it with all of my chest, absolutely fuck. 
Maroon. Pat Maroon, the little rig? The little rig, yeah, compared to uh, Jamie. Alexiak. Alexiak. Great name. That guy sucks, man. There can only be one big rig. That guy absolutely sucks. Trash move. Sucks. I don't know if you guys saw the note where, if you watched any of it, you saw it. second? The, yeah, after the end of the second period, after the scar- Stars went up uh, 3-1, he flipped it up into the Stars bench. As they were, like, walking back into the locker room, like, as the buzzer hits or horn goes off, picks up the puck, tosses it at the bench. Like, not hard, but, I mean. You don't, uh, uh, yeah, you don't do that. It's definitely Djokovic throating it. quality. I think, he, did he throw at the linesman? <laughs> he tried. I did he get almost, uh, roughed up in the third? He ten minute ten minute uh, game misconduct. Yeah, really. Yeah, I say kick him off the tour, Doug. <laughs> Can't chip with that going on. When's no. the next game tonight? Tonight, 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 seven o'clock. Uh, I'm feeling it, man. Sagan, I keep saying Tyler Sagan's gonna he's gonna come out of it. <laughs> he's not playing bad, but he just hasn't put it in the net. I think tonight's the night. That's all I got. All right, let's go stars. Tonight's let's the night. Stars. Uh, in the bub. Did you guys watch that game last night? Yeah, Anthony Davis is a monster. That was incredible. Dude, shout out to UTV, YouTube TV for making it easy for me to watch multiple things at one mm-hmm. time. Really? Wait, what? I don't know this feature. I keep flipping Not back. Not on the same device. Not on the same device. Oh. But, like, I've got it open there on my laptop. I've got oh, US Open on my laptop, football on my TV, basketball on the phone. You can really mix it up. And this is how I consumed the uh, Laker game. And I thought Denver was about to <laughs> – Dude, I thought they were about to do it, man. And uh, so these people who wow. have like multiple TV setups in, the, in a room, that's, they they do something like that. How do they do it? Direct TV is good about allowing you to have like multiple five feeds for people with like six TVs in a house. I don't know. Say if you've got a ranch with like gotcha. several televisions in a room, um, that's probably a Direct TV setup. I think YouTube TV allows like three devices going at once. Um, so I too have done the iPad TV combo, and it's yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I sent it out last night. The game was great. I think the Nuggets played well. You know, I don't think that anyone's looking at the Nuggets saying they don't deserve to be there. They're a well coached team. They play well. They absolutely pissed down their leg on the last uh, inbound pass that allowed Anthony Davis to uh, get open. Plumley and. Uh, Grant, I don't remember his first name, uh, starts with a J. Um, but basically, they you can see them discuss, hey, we're going to switch. LeBron basically sets the pick, and Grant did not switch over to Davis. Y- Djokovic basically guarded the inbound pass and got back to contest the three before Grant, who was standing right there, got over. And he was in no man's land, and it was embarrassing. And Anthony Davis, again, Proves why LeBron is the only man who could ever win a game like this because Dude. he deserves all the credit for how amazing Anthony Davis is. Yeah, Djokovic actually had a. Did I say that right? Yeah, Djokovic. I keep I saying Djokovic it, because I'm thinking of tennis, but it's it, Djokovic. Isn't it Djokic? Or Djokic. Yeah, oh, Djokovic. Is, uh, I screwed that up. You're he's thinking one, of tennis. Yeah, he's yeah. the one who throats. Um, <laughs> yes, and and Jokic probably throats too. Also, yeah. Jokic. Uh, dude, he contested that. He was nowhere near the apex of the ball, or like the. No. He was not going to block it, but like he actually got played not terrible yep. defense. It's just that Anthony Davis is a seven footer who grew up playing point guard, and uh, he just got handles and and a sweet shot. It's pretty absurd. Uh, I'm pretty much convinced now. As much as I'm riding with the Heat, I, I don't think anybody's beating the Lakers. So That's- I'm I'm just bracing myself for LeBron. Yeah, I think Denver's comfortable being down 2-0. They're not afraid of a deficit in this playoff, but I, I'm with you. This It seems very difficult to beat the Lakers four out of the next six games. Uh, Yeah, and it's still bizarre to me seeing the, the cast of characters the Lakers roll out. I know it's like cliche to talk God. about that it's LeBron, AD, and a bunch of guys, but, but like Rondo is absolutely balling. Mm-hmm. Seeing him hit step-back threes – I'm oh. just like, dude, because he's he's he and Lamar Odom more so him because Lamar Odom at least had like personal issues and stuff. My least favorite Mavericks of all time, Rondo. We traded yeah, the, the Rondo trade did not work. One of the worst, the worst trade in Mavericks history. Somebody slid in my DMs. Well, I shouldn't say slid, but hit me up in the DMs like saying, "Hey, no Rondo slander around here." And I was like, first off, who the hell is out there defending Rondo?" Second off, William Rondo. Here's why. <laughs> and because uh, we were talking about his brother being like the barber uh, czar or whatever. Um, but he's like, you know what? After reading this, I fully get it. <laughs> I 
the nine game experience of Rondo and Dallas was terrible. He literally quit in the playoffs. Yep. Like he just didn't play. And it was just that's Dirk's prime. I mean, Dirk was a little bit out of his prime, but we were still competitive. We were like, dude, we're about to run it back. We did not run it back. In fact, we haven't won a playoff series since 2011. <laughs> Who do you think's coming out of the East? Because that series is a battle. It's Miami. Miami? Okay. I, I think it's Miami, too. Uh, I, I just think that they, they're tougher. They're more experienced. Those, And they're just they're good. They're good. They nope. got sneaky guys that will steal a game, and Jimmy Butler won't let them lose. Um I think Boston's still a year or two away. They're just so young. I mean, all of Boston's best guys are like 23 or mm -hmm. younger. Uh, Gordon Hayward's like four years older than the rest of the core. Did y'all yeah. see the, the meme going around of him? Like, what does it look like Gordon Hayward does for a living? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I miss this one. He's Because uh, he's got – he's he's very uh, borderline Peaky Blinders fuck boy with mustache, and he's just incredibly white and just like reddish <laughs> hair. So there's been a lot of really good ones. Like, somebody said like busting up a – Busting up a union, uh, <laughs> or something in the late 1920s or something. Like there's just <laughs> there's some really good Hayward tweets if you're if you're interested. Uh, dude, all I'm gonna say is do not let Jay Crowder get hot. That's Jeez. all I'm gonna say. I want that dude. That on, I want him back on the. Mask. Wasn't Jay Crowder traded for Rondo to bring it full yes. circle? He that was, was the guy. That yeah. yeah, yeah. But he had a contract that that the Mavericks couldn't carry. He was about to get paid at that point, and they needed to get get him out of he's there he's been on like 12 teams and i feel like he doesn't deserve to be a journeyman like he's good enough on defense and he he's you know i feel go out there and shoot like 30 percent from three like he's worthy of like a two or three year deal dylan your pick for the series miami for sure i, I will take brad from state farm and the celtics i'll be the only one uh watching marcus smart just be pissed off that he's advancing to the finals is brad hot I see you know? people on my timeline saying he's hot, and I'm like, is that? He's, he's got the look of, like, if he was my kid's stepfather, I'd be like, you know what? All right, man. <laughs> I get it. He's a good guy. <laughs> good dude. We get along. Yeah. Watch games together every now and again. <laughs> I, smoke him, I smoke him meat, <laughs> ribs, and chicken. Exactly. You want to do some quick dips? Let's do some quick dips. Brady and the Bucks bounce back, beat Carolina. Micah, your thoughts? Bucks came out hot. Carolina stinks, and they're in big trouble without uh, Christian McCaffrey, who I, I'm going to call it for the first time here. This is the first ever Micah's Read of the Week, the newsletter curse, because I featured a piece about Christian McCaffrey on today's uh, Read of the Week. And then I saw he is going to miss several weeks with an ankle injury. Do you think the curse this is uh, only Mike enhances is, his followers? Micah's read of the week or GQ's spread of him? Well, it, I was. Who deserves more credit for this? You think his piece? <laughs> well, it, it was the piece. I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. No. That was that. It was the GQ spread that was featured in Micah's no, read I of the week. No, and I get it. I'm, but, yes. You know, I don't think. But it, the piece that <laughs> Never mind. the piece of the that you read in today's read of the week, I also exer excerpted excerpted. Exerted. Exerpted? Excerpted. Uh, excerpted. Excerpted. I don't know if the, the piece sounds silent. <laughs> copy and pasted? I copy and pasted <laughs> the part where he talked about how he trains his body and how he's ahead of everybody else in the league and how he hasn't missed a game since 2017. So this Here one's on go. me. When you do a photo shoot like that, do you go into the locker room and is there like – Got to expect to get a little blowback. blown up everywhere yeah. over every urinal? Like, right, you get roasted for, for such a spread. I mean, because – the little bandana around the neck, the cowboy hat. Don't get me wrong, it was hot. A little too hot, if you ask me. GQ does these weird ones. Didn't they do, wasn't the Tom Brady like all white with with uh, goats photo shoot from like a decade was ago? That wasn't Kobe? that GQ? I thought that was Kobe. No, Kobe had oh, a Kobe weird, had a weird Kobe white had one, a weird too. Back in the day. Tom Brady had a weird one with goats, I believe. I feel like you get okayed or grandfathered in if you do the ESPN The Body. Um, you know, especially for Prince Fielder, one of my favorite photo shoots of all time. Oh, yeah. Um, but when you go out on your own and you do a GQ individually, like you're, it's open season. Yeah, this is a GQ. Uh, Tom Brady just carrying goats around. Uh, I feel like the loser of our uh, picks thing should have to do a GQ style spread with the prof well with professional photo photographer Dylan, who we learned today took photography in high school and actually knows how to develop oh, film. He just wanted to hang out in the wow. film room. That was the joke we made. Oh damn it! 
It's okay. Yeah, the disadvantage of not one, hearing the uh, <laughs> circling back before no, recording. No, no. It's but okay. I'm glad we're on the same wave. Same wave. You're, yeah, you understand what we're doing here. Rogers is lighting it up still. I, I didn't see any of this game, but it's it's clear that even without Devontae Adams in the second half, uh, Matt Lafleur is a good coach, and Aaron Rodgers is a good quarterback. <laughs> I uh, I really need Detroit to be competitive because dejected sports will is not fun. Like, Will comes in, and we're like, you know, I I don't want to, like, stunt about the Cowboys. I mean, obviously, there's a lot to to criticize there, too. But Will's like, I don't want to hear it. He's like, the Lions are trash. And it's just, I want him to have some sports joy from Detroit. It's every, it it, it lifts the ship. Yeah. Well, and Detroit, after two weeks, is just about as hopeless as any team in football. Like, there there is no chance Detroit is going to turn it around, end up 11-5, and 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 make a playoff run. Like, they, they stink. And, and like them and the Jets are just awful. They don't have young players to look forward to. They got Matthew Stafford, who's, I mean, I don't know, thirty five. Like this, this isn't like a young, exciting team. At least with Miami, you're like, we're gonna stink, but we got Tua, and maybe we got some talent. It's just depressing, and I, I do feel for Will. And they have a fat coach. I do pull for Danny Amendola. Other than that, it's it's sad. Matt Stafford, thirty two. Um, Island Park Zone. Chiefs Chargers was actually a good game. To it was enjoyable. I watched a good percentage of this game. I didn't realize that Tyrod Taylor had gotten injured in pregame. Heard it, he had a chest injury or chest chest, chest pain. tightness. He apparently yeah, yeah. had trouble breathing. Oh pre-game. shit! That's I mean that's kind of scary. He apparently yeah. had a rib injury that that made it to the injury list on Friday, but nobody thought it was going to mean anything. So he had a rib injury too. I see. Um, <laughs> Herbert looked good. For being called in to play like out of nowhere and for how little of faith it seems like people had on him as a rookie quarterback, I mean, the dude played well. Three touchdowns, got him into overtime against Patrick Mahomes. Um, you know, it 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 was a good showing. And I think Anthony Lynn is doing some good things there. I just don't know how long of a leash they're gonna have. How about the stones on that kicker? Big stones. He makes a fifty three oh, yeah. yarder. It Butker. gets called back for Butker. gets called yeah. back for procedure. Then he lines up for 58. He nails it, but they call the timeout. And then he knocks it in again from 58. Mm-hmm. He's he's cold. Yeah. Uh, Texans, we kind of talked about this. Tough, tough scene there. Baltimore's Chief, good. This Baltimore, is Baltimore just doing what they do again. We haven't done Super Bowl picks, but I I want to be like cool and, and kind of trendy and say I think Baltimore is going to sneak by KC. <laughs> That's your under the radar That's pick. My under the radar pick. The <laughs> second best team in the NFL. Yeah, the team went four. Going to make the Super Bowl. They go fourteen and two last Way year. Way go takes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but dude, they're they're so much better than Texans. They're they're really good. Yeah. yeah. I think the Texans GM should fire the Texans head coach. Oh man, Bill <laughs> O'Brien. The Texans fans are where Cowboy fans were with Jason Garrett. Yep. It's just, but it's just so much worse because I mean, he legitimately. He's going to get canned after this year, maybe even midseason, and this is on the heels of him trading like a franchise uh, cornerstone wide receiver, like the best receiver in the game, arguably. So I always bring that up. And Titans won the game uh, against Jacksonville. I didn't get to see as much of this game. The only reason I want to make note of it is that two weeks in, the uh, Jags aren't the worst team in the league. Uh, the Titans have a really good team. For the Jacksonville to put up 30 points on the Titans' defense to lose by a field goal basically in the last minute and a half of the game, again, there may have been some fluky things that happened. Minshew only had one incompletion week one. A couple picks kind of came back down to earth this week. I am uh, – they're, they're bringing me back in of having some hope about where this season is. So, be interesting. Then tonight we have New Orleans Saints, which we have all picked uh, for the game, at the Raiders uh, in their new stadium. Uh, have you guys seen the inside of the new Raiders stadium? No, but so far it was five billion dollars. Five B billion. Holy crap, man! Yeah. I it's, think that that also sort of sort of includes like the development around the stadium. To correct. be fair, that's a that's a bigger development in general. Two teams and the NFL's like West Coast headquarters are a part of that thing. Basically. It's a bigger complex in general, but. Yeah, this stadium looks dope. I'm I'm intrigued. The fact that it's a single team and they kind of stuck with the Raiders theme, that's a good-looking stadium. And they've got that uh, Cardinals field track where it rolls out into the outdoors and it's real grass. And, oh, that's cool. Yeah. I got to say, man, it's so cool to see a company like SoFi that, you know, makes money off of our crippling student debt problem. Uh, they're doing well. I just I love to see that. You know what I mean? 
It's just nice. And fantastic uh, reputation. Airlines like Allegiant just stunting with their uh, sponsorship deals. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I am going to watch the game mostly to see shots of the stadium and see what they have going on because, like Dylan, I am a big, uh, big fan of going to Vegas. Uh, so once it's safe to return to, what just a great can't wait. Fucking city. Can you imagine, is, Kate? Man, you I sit down it. at a blackjack table and Dylan and KJ sit down right after you, and you're just like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> fucking Dorn and KJ. It's <laughs> too much dip, guys. Dude, these dudes are these dudes are serious. <laughs> Wonder where play. Dave is. Dylan's like, like you know, you take a hit, you hit, and he's like, "Dude, the book says to not do that." <laughs> <laughs> you serious right now? Don't hit that, sir. No, do I do not hit that. You do not hit. You don't that. want to do that. I am the worst. At once that guy shows himself at a table, I will immediately make a bad play and then just stare him down. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like the passive mm, aggressive double. Comments at a blank I'll double. Table. Oh, blue for the table. Playing yourself. Yeah, with my money. Go fuck yourself. Mm. <laughs> anyway. uh, Mike, are you ready to run it back? Yeah, let's run it back. It's time for Run It Back, the segment in which we discuss what we've already discussed. KJ set the chicken on the smoker at 11.09 Sunday, and within 11 minutes, his day was ruined. Dylan takes grammar much more seriously than others. He also has resting typeface. That was a comma splice, by the way, in that sentence, but it's okay. <laughs> Check out Grammarly.com slash bang. Cowboys fake punts are flying directly into the sun. Mike Irvin... Spit on it, Bay. I'm not really sure what that okay. means, but so those were some words that were said know what that means. within you know a couple sentences of each other. The lads are skeptical about Prime's new gig. Baylor, always known for prioritizing the health of the general student population over the football program. KJ keeps that thing wet. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Dave took credit for this. Bryson's gains. I think that's fair. That's true. Uh, Dave also went micro and still got cucked. Yeah, despite of the, the cucking. Uh, Dave has never <laughs> Dave has never six jacked, or at least that's so he claims. Uh, Dylan played well at Torrey Pines once. I'm striking it well that day. Someone tried to throat the lineman in the hockey game the other day. Uh, Jokic probably throats too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. All right. Just read it. Who does that? Uh, you wrote it. <laughs> Brad Stevens looks. Uh, like the kind of guy you wouldn't hate is the stepfather of your children. Fair. Uh, the Micah's read of the news, read of the week newsletter curse is really going well. Uh, get well soon, Christian McCaffrey, and you really love to see great companies like SoFi and Allegiant getting some shine. <laughs> and that was run it back. Good stuff, Micah. Thank you, Dylan. Means you, a lot. You, you crushed that. I've, I've, I'm going to have to take some of these out of context and put them on the Twitter. The Brad Stevens comment. It's. That's just fantastic and, and actual. Way too accurate. <laughs> Anything we missed? I don't think so. So much sports. If there's something we missed, type up the email, use Grammarly, send it to yourself. We don't care. We're going to do another show on Thursday. We'll get it then. Oh, Hawthorne.co. Hawthorne.co. Remember mm -hmm. that. Not dot com. Keep that smell good on you. Promo code BANG. We'll be back Thursday night, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll be doing it. We'll be doing a live stream. Check it out. Watch yes, media, YouTube. Remember to support our socials. Too much dip with two P's on Twitter. Correct. And mm -hmm. too much dip podcast on Instagram. We will see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.